big news uh, uh, last week in, in our space was Intune Service Release 2405 uh, came out near the end of the week. Um, a number of things that we're seeing from 2405 that uh, I know myself, Johan, and the community are pretty excited about. Um, so some additional Mac OS settings catalog stuff, though Johan and I are focused on, on the Windows side of things. I, I do want to point out, uh, always nice when we see these Mac OS improvements for our friends that are um, uh, managing Macs in their environment. So good stuff there. We're seeing more Mac stuff show up in the settings catalog. Uh, that's, that's a great thing. Uh, a couple of improvements on the Windows side of things. Um, this improvement is pretty nice. End user access to BitLocker recovery keys for enrolled Windows, Windows devices. Uh, so end users can now uh, view their BitLocker recovery key when they need it uh, from the company portal website. Um, so anything that we can do, I think, for self-service um, is easy self-service, I should say, um, is, in a, is an improvement for our user experience. So I'm happy to see that. Um, we continue to get some new reports, um, native reports within Intune. So there's a new version of the hardware attestation report. Um, I can show you what that looks like real quick, though. On my end, most of my devices are uh, VMs, so we're not going to see a ton. Uh, if we look at the hardware attestation report here, you'll see basically what is going to populate here for a given physical device is uh, as long as we're using device health attestation, we'll see uh, BitLocker status, secure boot status, virtualization-based security, all these sorts of things built right into this report. So this looks like this is going to be a nice report. Um, haven't had a chance to play around with this in a production environment yet uh, because it's uh, very new, uh, but something to take a look at for sure. Uh, this is another one that is uh, showing up that I like, uh, monitor device delete actions. So there are some improvements um, here. If we go to our devices and then monitor and device actions, you'll see I just have a couple here in my environment at the moment where I tried last week to launch remote help uh, on a particular client, wasn't configured uh, properly for remote help. So we see the status failed. But you'll see additional information here now, like device deletions, um, something to keep track of, especially in a production environment. So nice improvement there. Uh, we're also seeing the feature update policy in Intune. Up to this point has basically just been a required update and you determine the uh, essentially when the update is available and the deadline for that rollout. Uh, we now have the ability to set these feature updates uh, to optional. Though I did see um, earlier this week that some users uh, or some admins were setting this policy up as optional, um, but the, the update was still coming down as required. Did you happen to see any status updates on that, Johan? Did not, but I, I did see the same posts. Okay. I, I so haven't gonna, tried it out yet in, in my lab, but that might be something to watch out for. Same here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we've seen more than one person uh, uh, have that experience, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Uh, but this is a feature we're going to keep an eye out on. Um, it's pretty interesting, I think. Um, last but not least, on 2405, uh, the Defender for Endpoint Security Baseline in Intune, the default baseline, has now been updated to use the settings catalog and has been updated to version 24H1. This security baseline hadn't seen an update since late 2021, I believe. It's been a little while. Uh, Just around the corner, yeah. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, happy to see that update now. Um, I haven't. Uh, I I have the update created or the the new security baseline created, uh, but I haven't done the comparisons yet to see what exactly has changed. Um, so, hopefully, uh, with a few moments time over the next week, I'll be able to talk a little bit about that uh, more next week. Um, but that was the twenty four oh five release. Now, 
not directly related to 2405, but something that we know is coming. And we talked about this a little bit last week, uh, though this has been sort of uh, uh, known for a while, was what some people have been calling Autopilot V2, or, or some of the community has been calling Autopilot V2, because we didn't really have a name for it. Uh, that was the most appropriate way to call it, I think. Uh, we've now de- uh, found out that that is really a new autopilot profile. Um, and so this was announced last week that that, that is coming for us. Uh, it's not coming for us. That sounds a little aggressive. That, that it will be available. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It will be available for us soon. Um, the reason I bring this up again is because there were a lot of questions that uh, came up out of this post um, and in the community. And Microsoft responded to several of those questions uh, down here at the bottom of this post um, here. So you can see there's a number of questions. Uh, the first one is actually what I just touched on. Is this a new version of Autopilot? And the answer is no, it's not a new version because what we have out there is going to continue to work. Um, so this is essentially a new profile. Um, and there's some other questions in here as well. Uh, Lior has also mentioned that they will be doing a round two of answers. So if you still have questions for this uh, uh, upcoming new profile for autopilot, how it might affect you or your organization, and that hasn't been addressed yet in these questions or the post itself, um, please hop in this post. Uh, I, they've been encouraging that people hop in here, ask questions. Uh, we see none other than Michael Niehaus himself is asking questions here uh, that we're hoping to get answered. So please, if you have questions, uh, I would encourage you to hop in and ask them. Uh, we'll, we'll be looking for answers and keeping an eye out on this in the future. Uh, any comments or anything you'd like to add there, Johan? Nope, nope, nope. nope. All right. All right. A um, couple of other updates uh, I mentioned. Those are those are sort of two of the major ones uh, that we had. Uh, for those of you that are using Windows Update for business reports um, <clears throat> in log analytics, uh, there is an update now where you can alert on missing devices in those reports. Um, so pretty interesting update. Just caught wind of this uh, yesterday. Somebody shared it. Uh, with us. Um, so I have not gone and configured this alert yet uh, or anything, but looks like this is going to be very useful. Uh, that's, uh, you know, a common KPI when we're looking at patch compliance um, is how many devices are we actually covering? Our patch compliance may look like 100% uh, in, in the reports, uh, but if we're missing uh, some percentage of devices, then how can we really be sure? So this will help us determine which devices are missing, how we can track them down. Um, you can see here as an example, there are a couple of devices that we're not sending device diagnostics up to this solution. Um, sorry, just uh, popping over my camera. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so great improvement there. Happy to see this. Um, now, some exciting news I saw for you, sir. You will be heading over to Europe pretty soon. Over to the Workplace Ninja Summit. How about that? Oh, are you muted? I'm muted. Uh, I'm very excited to go to Switzerland. Uh, uh, I've been a good while since I've been there, but it's... It, I probably have to bring a second suitcase just to bring home chocolate with me. Uh, please, I would like to put in my formal request for some chocolate. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what we have here is the tweet for that announcement. And there's a nice, uh, a short, maybe 10, 12 minute interview here um, about that announcement. Uh, yep. So I would encur- encourage you all to uh, check this out. Very exciting stuff. I, I'm, uh, very happy for you and the conference uh, that they'll have you there. So I'm excited to hear about it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Um, so I had some fun on Sunday. 
uh, as you do on Sunday evenings, of course, um, based on a post that I'll share here in a moment from Michael Niehaus, uh, I went ahead and started um, <clears throat> creating my uh, lab VMs for Windows 11 24H2, which is now in officially in release preview, uh, as well as uh, I'll save this for a later time, but also started deploying uh, Windows Server 2025. Um, so that's pretty exciting to get those into my lab for the first time. Um, pretty excited to see how many people apparently agree with spending their Sunday nights uh, deploying release preview versions of Windows 11. That's the way this community does things. It's awesome. Yeah, they have the support for overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Quite surprising, to be honest. Yeah. Um, uh, but I, the inspiration for doing that on uh, over the weekend was this post from Michael Niehaus, uh, basically um, detailing how to get uh, how to get the ISOs um, after uh, Microsoft announced last week that this was being released to the release preview channel, um, as well as some encouragement um, to get going to Windows Eleven. Uh, I, I like his comment here. Your time is running out to either move from Windows 10 to 11 or write Microsoft a big check for extended support. So kudos to Michael uh, for writing this post and getting me motivated to uh, check out 24H2. Would recommend uh, the rest of you do that as well. Yeah, but it, it's, it's funny that you mention it because me and another Mike, Mike Terrell, we presented two upgrade sessions to Windows 11 at, uh, during MMS. And we mm -hmm. had a good 200 people in the audience every time for each of those two sessions. And we asked the folks in the audience like, all right, how far are you with your Windows 11 upgrades? And maybe two people said that were like 75% done, not many more, 50% done. And most of the people in the room, they had just started. And, and oh. it's only here. Uh, and yeah, I was quite surprised to see that number. Yeah, that is surprising. So, anywho, anywho. Well, con consider this another uh, friendly reminder. Uh, you may want to get started on that if you haven't already. Yeah. Um, so last but not least, the last thing I had... Um, was a uh, comment related to something that you were talking about last week that you that I know you'll get into here in a moment. But um, Mark Godfrey posted, uh, if you are an HP customer using the manageability uh, integration kit with Config Manager, it's broken due to some of the things uh, that, that broke with the 2403 rollout. Um, so that is an FYI. And the second part of that... Uh, our friend Gary Block, who I see is happily joining us uh, today. Hello, Gary. Uh, posted a workaround for this. If you are using the uh, HP MIK and you've already upgraded to 2403 and you need a workaround, here is that workaround from Gary. So we'll make sure both of these tweets get posted in our links for this evening. Um, but Johan... This was not the only thing that broke with 2403, uh, nor is it the only fix or workaround, I should say, is it? No, uh, pretty much, I wouldn't say every console extension, but there were more than just this one that, that uh, didn't work as expected. So if, let me see, if I do this, all right. Um, you have the same problem with the MDT integration. And the way it manifests itself, what the symptoms of it is, you basically get an application crash in the console and it goes away and you will see these events in the event log, in the application event log, something like this. And uh, Ahmed with Dell reached out to me. Uh, he found out the same uh, fix that, that Gary found out for the HP stuff. Uh, works also for MDT. So he posted an article here on LinkedIn uh, I'm not going to join it right now or logged in, but it's basically the same here that you go ahead and update those XML files and life is good. And then you can uh, create sequences again. You can create new boot images again. 
um, with this extension. So thank you everyone for chiming in with that solution. That was that was good stuff. Something else I stumbled across was they are doing another, or Microsoft uh, is doing another tech community live now in June. So a four hour ask uh, me anything or AMA uh, sessions. So I highly recommend to uh, join that one. Uh, the agenda will apparently be released here on, I think they are a little bit behind. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, yeah. So maybe keep an eye on this the, the, the next upcoming days, and we will keep an eye on it as well. And then tweet out if you see any changes. But uh, changes are coming, apparently. So looking forward to that one. Uh, another update came from, again, uh, Michael Niehaus. He posted some of the latest information for Microsoft regarding the VP script, but also gave a little bit of, of uh, information about VP script. It's not just VP scripts that you happen to have as a VPS or WSF extension. But first, deprecation phase two is announced for 2027 timeframe. And after that, at some point, it's going to be removed uh, uh, from Windows. But until then, Microsoft has a good deal of work. And a little bit surprisingly, perhaps, but what you will find, let's see what that one was. Um, there are tons of app installers, MSIs, that is using VB scripts in them. So they will, of course, also break if you remove the VP script component. So um, I have a feeling we're going to see it around for quite some bit or quite some time. But at least you have some time here to upgrade your normal scripts. So what I, I do recommend folks that are, for example, today you're using Config Manager with the MDT integration, that is a bunch of scripts, start porting them over to some PowerShell equivalents or start to review what you have done in terms of your customizations. Maybe there are options available natively in Config Manager now that weren't available when you developed this. And maybe there are other platforms available or solutions that can achieve the same result. So do a bit of an overhaul of what you had in terms of customizations and slowly move away from, from using VBScript and over to PowerShell or um, manage code uh, for this. Then we had a quite exciting announcement. And I can't say I'm super surprised, but Patch My PC were able to snatch Rudy. So uh, glad to see that. Glad to see. So Patch My PC. You'll be happy with Rudy, and Rudy, I'm pretty sure you'll be happy with Patch My PC. Yeah. Heck of a team that they're building or have built over there. That's for sure. Congratulations, oh, yeah. Rudy. Some smart folks over there. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So that was all I had in terms of news. Do we have any? Uh, oh, no. I forgot one. I scribbled down a piece of paper earlier. It was an email I got. Uh, uh. Uh, I was a request for a video on improving OSD speed. Uh, I didn't have time to prepare one for session today. Agenda, and I will publish that up on the Comment Research YouTube channel. So uh, if you can hold out until around midnight, whenever I get done with it, uh, it will be up there because I kind of promised to do that. So. All right. Sounds great. Looking forward to it. 